What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and a morning I am very, very much looking forward to. Since starting my YouTube channel in 2008, I was continually looking forward to turning 25 so that I could get behind the wheel of some pretty incredible machines. And for those that have recently subscribed to my channel, you would have seen that luckily, I have been able to drive some pretty special cars. However, today, I am going to Southern Sky Motors to drive a 2016 Lamborghini Aventador SV. Today is an incredible day and I'm heading over there in my AMG GTS. All morning, I have been thinking about this one question that over the last five to 10 years of doing supercars in London, filming cars in London, there has always been one question that I've asked as to why do we see more supercars on the road than ever before? Back when I started 2006, 2007, I used to go into London, walk around all day for eight to 10 hours, cover well over 10 miles, and be happy if I saw a couple of Lamborghini Gallardos and a Ferrari F430. The highlights of some of my amazing car spotting experiences were bumping into cars like the Pagani Zonda F, the Ferrari Enzo, or even a Murcielago LP640, because back in the day, they were the crazy rare cars. Fast forward 10 years to now, and you can go and walk around central London for half an hour and see dozens of Lamborghini Aventadors, even Porsche 918 Spiders, McLaren P1s, LaFerraris, and the cars are becoming more and more common, even though the price of them are becoming more expensive. So I always have this question as to why are there so many more supercars on the road than ever before? And the one answer that I always come round to is that modern technology makes these cars a lot easier to drive. So today, I'm going to Southern Sky Motors to test drive the flagship Lamborghini, the big V12 Aventador SV, to find out just whether you could daily that incredible hypercar but also just how easy is it to drive. By complete coincidence, this is exactly what I am talking about. I've just bumped into a brand new McLaren 570S on the way to Southern Sky, completely at random. And this car, the 570, is at 140 grand new plus options, which is more expensive than what the Ferrari F430 was and also the Lamborghini Gallardo was when it first came out. So that is what I'm talking about. The entry level McLaren I've just randomly bumped into. I've also seen a Ferrari California T, tons of Bentleys and a Rolls Royce Ghost just on a Tuesday. Here we are down at Lamborghini Heaven. Southern Sky have got an awesome all blacked out LP560 there. And they've also got a Giallo Midas Lamborghini Gallardo LP560 here. But today we have come down to check out and drive the Lamborghini Aventador SV, Lamborghini's flagship car, the hardcore race version, Super Veloce, 750 brake horsepower from a 6.5 litre V12. The engine sits right at the back and this car looks absolutely stunning. There is no other word to describe what this car is. It is Lamborghini through and through. As Jeremy Clarkson would say, this is the car that you would sit in maths class drawing as what you want cars to look like. And on the road, this car looks absolutely amazing. I have seen a few colors, not too many. And there was a yellow Aventador SV Roadster out in Monaco on English plates as well with a very similar number plate. This is SV12 Jet and the one in Monaco was an SV Roadster SV16 Jet. So let's just take a look around at some of the details on this car before we jump in and just see how easy that car is to drive. Ah, oh, the doors are so cool. The seats feel like you're sitting on a block of cement. You do. <laughs> oh, we are back with the wonderful off-center pedals of Lamborghini. <laughs> I'm joined here with Grant. If you can see him, the GoPro has got a wide lens. So, foot on the brake. So this 
car has got lift system, so that's a good thing to have around town. And it's saying please refuel, so we will experience that. I'm in first gear. Let's take it off from park. Just get out. Yeah. And up the bridge. This is ridiculous. <laughs> is that the game? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what? The steering is incredibly light for a four-wheel drive system. The seat, however, is probably not that adjustable, is it? Not totally, no. But everything is fixed. Backrest is fixed, yeah. Junctions is relatively easy. Oh, I can hear that V12 slowly warming up. My view in the wing mirrors are just incredible. I feel like I'm all over the road though. The suspension is just quite disorientating if I may say so on these roads. Like the UK roads probably aren't the best place to drive a car like this, but lots of bumps and you feel everything. I thought the Gallardo was pretty stiff, but this is on a, a whole new level of race suspension. And I'm concentrating a lot, and to be honest, jumping into a car that's got so much brake horsepower, 6.5 litre V12, 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds, is it 2.6 or 2.8? So around 2.8 I believe. 2.8 seconds. Back in the day, the Mersey Largo was a real pig to drive. People that drove it said that it was exactly like a Diablo. If you had it in the E-gear mode as well, it was very clunky. Clutches lasted about five to 7,000 miles, depending on how you drove it. Sitting in this car for five minutes, we've got a full Alcantara steering wheel, which is about half the size, or it feels about half the size of my AMG. It just gives you a little bit more feel and it's a little bit more race car -y. The AMG obviously being a, a super GT car, you want just a chunky, comfortable steering wheel. The Alcantara is very, very nice material. I've got all sorts of different buttons on here. We're driving it in Strada, which means street mode. So this is the comfiest setting, right? so heavy. 
me that it makes the car and the engine just feel incredibly heavy. And if we're going to be talking about just how easy is this car to drive or how potentially easy this car is to live with, yes the seats are pretty unforgiving and have no padding or comfort whatsoever. What are you going to expect from the race version of the Lamborghini flagship car? The wing mirrors are so big that you get an incredible view that you can see pretty much everything that you want to see. The blind spots basically aren't as bad as they were in the Gallardo. Unlike some of the other cars that I've recently driven, including the Lamborghini Huracan, when you take your foot off the brake, the car doesn't lurch forward like a normal automatic does. This car, you need throttle to get the car moving. steering stiffens up pretty damn quickly. I bet this car on a racetrack is an absolute animal. <laughs> and I tell you what, I feel slightly more confident driving this car with four-wheel drive that I did with the F12 that had rear-wheel drive. 730 brake horsepower to the rear wheels. It's something I would probably need quite a lot of time to get used to. But with this, it just makes everything that little bit more easier. Which is why I think I prefer driving this car to the F12. It's quite nice to cruise around in. Very easy, swooping dash, epic dashboard here, which is exactly the same as the of sort of an updated version of the Lamborghini Veneno. Then we're back into automatic, goes down the gears for me, very, very smooth, and then we can just cruise off again. Much smoother than previous Lambos. I probably wouldn't say it's as smooth as the Hurricane, 
because of course that's got the double clutch gearbox. The Aventador is yet and probably won't get a double clutch gearbox because the Aventador chassis just can't fit. With the V12 engine, the double clutch gearbox is too big to fit onto the Aventador chassis. What a car! I know I've just been sort of having a massive smile on my face, but what do you expect of driving an Aventador SV? But if we were to sum up what this car is like to drive, a lot easier than I was expecting, which answers my question that cars are becoming easier to drive. I would love to, to imagine testing this car back to back with a Diablo SV. We could have really got an idea of just how cars have come on in the last 10 to 15 years because I don't know what I'm indicating there. I'm just, I just can't believe that I'm sat driving a £400,000 Aventador SV. One, I can do it. And two, it's a lot easier than it looks. The one question that I ask a lot of Aventador customers is, is the car too wide? And the car is like as wide as a bloody bus. But I really don't feel that it is hindrance to the experience of driving this car but what a what a cool car I'm gonna do my best to get as many views for you guys as possible so you can see what this car looks like on the road from the inside and with the sports exhaust on Southern Sky for allowing me to come down and drive their most expensive car that you've had for sale for ever? Yeah, I think so. Ever. <laughs> so that is pretty crazy and I think I've answered the question as well. How easy is the Aventador SV to drive or in general how easy are these high performance supercars and hypercars becoming to drive? Surprisingly easy. I don't have that much experience driving cars and probably not what Grant wants to hear but <laughs> It's true, like out of all of the other reviewers out there, or a lot of other car YouTubers, driven cars for years, and I'm sat here just sort of pinching myself that I'm driving this car not even a year after turning 25. So this is a, an amazing dream come true for me, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Let's head back to Southern Sky Motors to round up what an epic day this has been, and also hopefully summarize just how easy some of the most expensive fastest supercars in the world are to drive. Well, holy crap, that was <laughs> an experience I will never forget. Driving a Lamborghini Aventador SV. Huge thank you to Southern Sky Motors. And I just want to say that that car, even though it is a V12 brute, it's relatively easy to drive. The steering wheel just makes it feel a lot more manageable, as does the throttle response. The gearbox, of course, being single clutch, isn't exactly the same as a double clutch. I always say that double clutch is just far more superior when it comes to smoothness and speed. But the single clutch just gives it that Lamborghini feel which I felt that the Hurricane was missing when I drove it and also as much being in the passenger as well. So what an epic day, what an epic day. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. So please give it a thumbs up for the Lamborghini Aventador SV. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you very soon for when I hopefully can get behind the wheel of some other cool stuff because this day, <laughs> I just don't know what happened. Thanks for watching guys, take care.